the staff who came to me last week, and I think the penny finally dropped, and she actually came to me and said, what can I do to increase uh, my turnover? Oh, brilliant. That's good. What, what's created that change? Hey, what's up? This is Pete here, and in this video, I'm gonna share with you how you, yes, you watching right now, can earn 1,000 to 3,000 pound per day doing what you love. I know what you're thinking, come on, Pete, this is clickbait, you're gonna share some generic, vague advice, and I'm gonna walk away from this video, and I'm gonna be no better off than when I started. I urge you to stick around, my friend, and the reason for it is because I'm actually gonna share the foundations of how you can get started with this, and believe me, if you've got a little bit of patience, if you've got, uh, you're not looking for a quick fix or an instant result, uh, then this is the place for you, and what I'm gonna share is realistic steps to earning that 1,000 to 3,000 pound per day doing what you love, like finding your icky guy. Yeah, so you find your icky guy, you make an impact, you make a lot of money, and you do what you love. What a great combination. So I need to say this uh, before we get into this video, and that is if you've got food in your belly, you've got a roof over your head, and you're healthy, you are already blessed. You are already in the top whatever percent in the world, and we have all the reason in the world to be grateful for that. But just because you're in that top whatever percent, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't ask what your potential is. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't be ambitious. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't look to level up and be the best version of you. In fact, my favorite question of all is, what is my potential? I'm really intrigued by knowing that, hey, if I really double down, if I focus, if I do the work and I keep doing the right thing over a sustained period of time, then where could I be in six months, a year, five years, 10 years? It's a great question, so maybe you wanna comment and put that question for yourself or even take it down because I wanna know what your potential is. Now the only way we can know our potential is by doing what we love and making sure that we earn enough money along the way so we don't have to worry about money. That's the saying, isn't it? Yeah, you don't need to become a millionaire, but what you do need to do is make enough money so you no longer need to worry about money. And this is the whole money situation we've got going on right now. In fact, it's been going on forever, but particularly it's become relevant in today's world. So like 2020, as I'm doing this video, people are feeling the pressure. And the reason for it is because every year we have inflation. It happens all around the world. In the UK, on average, inflation, I believe, goes up by about 2 to 2.5% per year. And the annual pay increase only goes up by like 1% per year. So in some countries, the inflation is more or less. Uh, pay rises might be more or less, but you get the idea, right? So let's look at this. If over a 10-year period, you've got inflation going up by 2% and only a pay increase of 1%, what you've got is every year, life is becoming a little bit less affordable. And by year 10, unfortunately now, your entire life is 10% less affordable than it was today. Now you might think, come on Pete, 10% isn't even a lot of, it's not a lot of money, but what about the fact that you wanna get a mortgage? What about the fact that you want to move forward? It, it creates all these other kind of offshoot issues. And then with everything becoming more expensive, property becoming more expensive, becoming more difficult to get on the property ladder in the first place, and that then moves into the next thing, which is traditionally, despite inflation, you could buy into wealth, because you go back 10, 20 years, especially 50 years, with your small salary, you could still afford to buy a property. So sure enough, your salary as your main source of income might not make you wealthy, but, your investments in property would actually take you up to the next level and then you start earning more than the inflation. Anyways, with life being a little bit different now and less people being able to afford things like property, we've got to find a different way. And there is some good news, my friend. The first thing is, is that we have this whole gig economy coming along now and freelancer economy, which is a good thing and also it's a bad thing, which we're gonna get into in a moment. But if you think about it, if you could take your skills or the particular thing that you know you can add value with, like for example, maybe you're excellent at marketing or maybe you are um, a genius when it comes to tennis 
fitness coaching um, or something that you love to do. And you can find a way to add value to others through doing this thing, that's when we start to move in the right direction. Now, there is more substance than this. It is not just a cliche, do what you love and you've, somebody will pay you for it. There, there is more detail. So let's look at this from a tangible aspect. The first thing you wanna do is, is actually establish what you can focus on. And I mean really double down and focus on. For me, it's always been sales training, sales transformation, giving people the confidence to go out there and sell. And I remember being 21 years old and my manager at the time saying, Pete, you're a pretty good salesperson. Would you mind doing some training for the rest of the team and sharing what you do? And I'll never forget, at the time, I just said to my teammates, I said, hey, listen, I, when I meet someone, I believe they're all a yes. And because I believe they're a yes, it, it always moves towards them making a, you know, making a purchase. But I believed at the time, and I saw this in my teammates, that you believe that people are a no and you've got to convince them to be a yes. And my team at the time were like, wow, this is really good training. And then they went on the following day, they had like the best day they'd had in months, and that was it, I was hooked. So I was lucky. I found something that people saw as valuable early on and I was able to cultivate that. But here's the, here's the key thing, that was, uh, I give away my age about 18 years ago now, and I'm still doing it now. So I've stuck with that one thing, and I've I've developed my foundations, and I continue to learn about it, and I haven't jumped around from one thing to another. So you may not know what that thing is right now, but it is important to know. If you want to earn 1,000 to 3,000 pounds per day doing what you love, it's important to build the whole ecosystem and lay down those foundations and develop a strong skill set for it because. Nobody's gonna earn 1,000 to 3,000 pounds per day or exponentially more if they're only average at what they do. You've gotta go there as a trusted advisor, as a consultant. Then, at this point, this is where it gets exciting. Um, you remove the industry assumed constraints. Now, if you take a flea, <laughs> there's a metaphor here, if you take a flea and you put it in a glass and that flea then uh, will jump up and obviously you know, escape, right? But if you put a lid on the glass, the flea will jump up and it will hit its head and it will jump up and it will hit its head and it will keep doing that. And then you leave that flea there for a few hours. When you come back, the flea would have learned to jump only to like a millimeter um, to, before hitting its head on, on the ceiling, right? So now it's jumping quite happily in the glass. Now you leave it there for a few more hours and guess what? You come back, you think, I've got to let this flea out. You take the lid off and you say, okay, off you go. What happens to the flea? Does it just jump out? No, because the flea has now learnt a limit. It's created a glass ceiling above it. And this is what we call assumed constraints. Every industry has assumed constraints. I remember being 18 years old, working as a personal trainer, and at the local gym I was working with, one of my colleagues, he turned around to me and he said to me, Pete, you know the only problem with working in the, in the health and fitness industry? And I said, what's that? He said, there's just no money in it. You can't make a thing. That is an assumed constraint, especially in 2020. I'm going back to like 1998 or 1999, but especially today, there is no limit to what you can earn. There is money in every single industry. There is value that you can add. There is people you can help. There is so much work to be done in every single industry. If there's no money in an industry, that industry wouldn't serve a purpose because that means that nobody sees any value in that, in that marketplace. So remove the, um, the assumed constraints of the industry. I remember when that guy said to me, oh, there's no money in the industry, and just being in disbelief, I'm like, are you serious? Like, I can become like a celebrity personal trainer. I can focus on training CEOs. I can, I just had all these ideas. So keep that creativity wherever you're at in your life. It's really important to do that. Next up is, is keeping this straightforward, okay? There's loads of directions that we can, we can go with this, but for the sake of today's one video, maybe I'll do some more videos. If, you, if you're liking what I'm sharing, comment below and I'll do some more videos around this. But I like to look at it of saying, right, okay, well, which market do I want to serve? And there's loads of different markets you can, you can serve, right? But we're looking at it from B to C 
or B2B. B2C, business to consumer, so helping individuals, and B2B is business to business, so you are helping companies. Let's start with B2C. Now, we've never had this ability that you can take your shop and it's available to customers all around the world. My dad had a, a music shop for 25 years and he was limited to people that walked up and down the shop, um, uh, up and down the street, um, or you know, people at least in the UK that would hear of him through the yellow pages. But in today's market, you can have customers on the other side of the world. My sales academy, we have customers in Canada, in, um, in Qatar, uh, in Australia, New Zealand, legitimately all over the world. So there's nothing stopping you adding value to people in all walks of life from all around the world. But also what it means is there's lots of competition. So what you need to do is make sure again that you double down and you focus on being the best at what you do. If you wanna work on a B2C level, then looking at your skill and thinking, how can I teach this? That's the first thing. Whether you're coaching it, mentoring it, teaching it, um, that is the place to start. Like right now, I'm doing this video, right? And you know, maybe you can start your YouTube channel if you haven't done yet. But whatever you decide to do, you've got to be willing to do what the rest of your industry hasn't got the courage to do. Last year in July, so 2019, I went and visited 100 business owners in 30 days and I helped those 100 businesses. Over those 30 days, we created a whole marketing campaign. I did it for free and the reason why I did it was because I knew when I had the idea that nobody else in the industry would have the courage to go and do something as crazy as that. And for the sake of 30 days, and sure enough, I traveled with my girlfriend all over the UK, um, but the result was, was that we had ama we met amazing people, many of them are now customers, they're part of my academy, you get the idea. So it's looking at what can you do that the rest of your industry hasn't got the courage to do. Again, if you want me to do another video on this, then let me know in the comments because I can definitely go into more detail. When you're working on a B2C level, it is about community. So it's about building a community and there is a community for everything now, um, for how to walk your dog, for how to um, uh, make the best garden, for how to look after a bonsai tree, for uh, book reading, all of these different specific things. And the more narrow it is, usually the more defined it is in actually helping a specific group of people. If you're like, you've got that one interest, there will be many people like you who also have that interest. Then if we look towards B2B, so you are serving companies, and now it gets even more interesting because at this stage, what you can do is you can think, okay, well, surely companies, and, and companies, by the way, right now are crying out for help because companies haven't got all this innovation. Some have, but many haven't. And they might have been operating 20, 30 years, and you go along there and you, maybe you're a videographer and you say, hey, I would love to set up with you on a retainer basis and basically be able to um, come in every month and provide ongoing marketing videos for you. Maybe vlog behind the scenes. That in itself can pay thousands of pounds per day. A lot of companies haven't got any of their social media sorted. So legitimately they are just, you know, not just employees, but they're employees and they're looking at social media thinking, we need help with this. You can teach them is one option. You can do it for them. You can outsource the work. So you can become an agent for it. There are so many options. Over the years, um, I've been able to go into more than 400 companies and legitimately I've gone in and I've looked at how can I add value to them? How can I help them to transform their sales? How can I help them to level up their game? You, you get the idea. And by the way, I've used the word transformation a number of times throughout this video and there's a reason for it. Because if you look just to be a videographer or just to be a sales trainer or just to be a yoga instructor, there's a major issue with that you will start to look like the thousands, if not millions of other people doing that work. Where you get to gain your edge, instead of selling what you do, you sell the transformation that you create. So if you're a personal trainer, rather than selling personal training, you sell body transformation. That is where it becomes worth this 1,000 to 3,000 pounds per day. You might say, hold on a sec, Pete, who's gonna pay me a 1,000 pound per day for personal training? Well, one client won't, but actually, 
if you've got three, four clients on that day and they're paying you maybe 8,000 for a whole body transformation, you then step into a whole new ball game. I can talk and talk around this, but hopefully this has been enough just to point you in the right direction. There's loads of videos here on my YouTube channel, also as well in my Facebook group, Ultimate Sales Training with Pete Scott. Check out there, I post content every single day. And let's get this ball rolling, let's actually Focus on you having this goal. How do I earn 1,000 to 3,000 pounds per day doing what I love? Because you can do the work, you can make a lot of money, but if you're if you're not connected to the work that you're doing, if it's purely a job, it, it's not about the money anymore. It becomes something that you do instead of actually having the heart and soul behind it. Equally, it's great to do what you love, but if it's not paying, it can be frustrating because you're not able to tap into your full potential. There's two things really. Number one is doing what you love, and then number two is earning a great income doing it. There's nothing to be shy about, there's nothing to hide behind, add the value, Go out there, know that you're valuable and know that you can make a difference in the world. Thank you so much for checking out this video and I'll see you in the next one.